Last evening at about 5 o'clock, uh, I was thinking of coming for the prayer time. Then the whole day this tulu tulu storm has been, uh, the, the rain has been going on. And then we were expecting another storm. Then it came to my spirit that December is God's month and month of uh, many testimonies and so many uh, witnesses, so many Catholic services, so such an important month. Many churches prepared and I said, God, this December we want nice weather, clear weather, and we don't want any rain. I just said that, and thank God within the next hour the rain cleared up, and today we have a rain-free day. <laughs> so, I am praying with you that we take faith that all the events every church has planned would be rain-free. Will you say rain-free? You know, we know this is a nice, soft, sweet month, isn't it? Yeah, whether you believe Jesus Christ was born in December or not, December is a nice, sweet, soft month. Don't you think? It's, December is the best weather, best, best climate, best weather. Uh, so, we want this month to be like that. One more time, we don't want storms. Storms don't listen to that kind of murmur. Now, with strong voice, we don't want storms. Thank you very much. Uh, you have to pray next week. On Tuesday we have a meeting in Nigambo Hospital for 70 doctors and 70 nurses. It's, it's a digital meeting but we are taking the team to witness them. In the 40th minute of my lecture, I begin to address mistake management. That's the time their hearts begin to open. So, so Tuesday, 11.30, remember in prayer. Seven, Thursday we have a big program in Grimula, in, in, in Genesis factories. Uh, so it's a big program and we have a church there and we are going with great hope because Dinesh has prayed and because Nilash has prepared an excellent lunch, tea and morning tea. We have to go. We must not go. But you have to pray, okay? Thursday, all day, that is from 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock we have program. So please pray hearts open, that is Dinesh's heart and they take a lot of trouble for arranging that program. Uh, we want people to get saved. It's a completely spiritual program. So Lord, we are asking a blessing now for the word of God in Jesus' precious name. Now, give a high five to your neighbor and say, prepare for Advent. Yeah. If you were theologically, you should have asked for which one. So, now, so do a high five like that. It is possible. We will you to demonstrate to Rosh I mean, you, you are all magenta, okay. So this is the month of magenta. So, one, one for each couple, try this here. Try this, one for the first event, one for the second event. First event, second event. First event, second event, okay. So, so the first coming and our meditation reflections of the first event is good enough for us to prepare us for the second one. Uh, Luke chapter 1. You know Luke is the one who wrote the gospel asking everybody because he was not part of the apostolic team. So when his boss Theophilus got converted or was converting and Christian influence was spreading all over the Roman Empire, Theophilus said, Luke, go to Palestine and find, discover for me what has happened. That's how Luke came. And Luke's profession was Luke was a medical doctor here. He was a physician. So those days physicians kept records. So they kept family records. So he was a good recordist, good historian. That's how we find in the Gospel of Luke a very accurate historical record. So if you want to uh, check up whether the Gospel is historically true, you go to Luke. So Luke has proven again and again an accurate historian. Okay? You need to know that. So here we go to Luke chapter 1 verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now, let's do a contemporary version of it, okay? There was in the days of President Michael City Sena, in the country of Sri Lanka, a certain priest named Krishantan Daniel of the division of Brookside. His wife 
was of the daughters of David and her name was Shal. So it's very current. So while Emperor is ruling and Herod quite a fox kind of king in, 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 in ruling in Palestine, God is focusing on two people who have seemingly come to the end of their life, you know. And uh, Zacharias is a priest. And we are already told they were both righteous. They've advanced in the end, verse 2, and they were both righteous before God, walking on in all the reform, in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord, blameless. They had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren and they both were well advanced in years. Now how would you know, though the Bible says they were well advanced in years, that Elizabeth, that Zechariah was less than 50? You assuredly, assuredly get at least a cookie if you answer that. Now my wife can't answer that because cookie is not enough for Quickly, how would you know that Zacharias is less than 50? Anyone who knows, put your hand up. Though it says they were well advanced, that how do you know that Zacharias is probably less than 50? Yeah, because priests serve only till 50. So though it says well advanced, yes, probably under 50. Uh, so Elizabeth might have been 45. She may have been naturally past the age of ability to bear children, though we don't know that. So they were still holding on. And the name Elis Elizabeth means it comes from the Hebrew Elisha, <coughs> God of the oath. Say with me, God of the oath. And Zechariah means God remembers. So they still believed, and you know in those cultures and even now, when a lady doesn't have a child, people think barrenness is because of the woman, which is not always true. But in Sri Lankan culture also, the mother-in-law will blame the daughter-in-law for the barrenness. Is that true or not? All the mother-in-laws don't. Sort of, I lost them. I'm sorry. But that's how the culture goes. But it may not be so. But anyway, the shame of it comes on the lady. The lady feels, I, I couldn't bear it, I couldn't bring this child. However, they not only obeyed the commandments, they kept all the requirements of the law. Say with me, commandments. Amen. Say with me, requirements. Amen. So what kind of Christian are you? One who keeps the commandments or does commandments and keep requirements? Commandments usually go, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lust after thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not give false evidence. That's commandments, isn't it? Requirements are far more generous that you want to do all what God asks you to do. You want to do what pleases God. Did you? Are you getting the difference? Commandments are don't, don't, don't. And when God says don't, that's don't. Or do, do, do. Okay? Requirements are, these were very glad to do whatever God wanted them to do. So there are 33% Christians. That is, you want to get 33% then you get, through. how many of you were 33% students? The danger of that is, you may miss one mark and you get 32% you fail. How many of you were 50% students? You wanted to get a credit pass. Now you look at put your hand up. How many of you were 75% students? You wanted to get a distinction in the subject. Of course, this is with reference to not mathematics, physics, chemistry. This is reference to requirements of the law. How many of you were 95% students? You are not satisfied with 75%. You want to get at least 95%. Such an, such an auto is standing here. But when you come to Christ, how, how have you fixed your heart about the requirements of the law? You will do 33%. Just pass. Just pass. Hell was burning and you were feeling the fire of hell. But pish! You 
just entered heaven. Oh, I feel heaven. Oh, oh. We shouldn't be like that, isn't it? We should be Christians who do all, all what pleases the Lord. Shall we say together, Lord? I want to be a Christian. Who does? All what pleases the Lord. My please, please don't be a 33% Christian. Now we have prayed and asked the Lord, send to our assembly 75% Christian. But do I mean? This is not about school subjects. This is about doing the will of God at distinction level. Will you give a hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. This is not about brain power. This is your, the willingness of your spirit. I want to be a 75% Christian. It's okay. You miss some things. You become 50. That's okay. But your heart is, Lord, I want to please you all the time. Elizabeth and Zacharias was like that. But, will you say me, but. They had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both well advanced in years. Still they served the Lord all they can. So it was that while he was serving as priest. Before God, in the order and his division, called the custom of priesthood, something is going to happen. What does it say? So it was while he was serving as priest. So every father is the priest of the home, every mother together, as you are doing your family prayer time, something is going to happen. What does it say? Now it happened. Say with me, now it happened. When does it happen? That while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order, never neglect your first office. What is your first office? Priest at home. Priest over the children's life. That now we all have another office, meaning the work you have to do for your livelihood. But please put it into heart that you will say, my priestly office is my first office. Shall we try this together? My priestly office is my first office. Alright. That is the intercession, interaction between you and your God, which is going to bless your family, bless your children, bless your finances, bless your health, and bless your neighbor. So the other day, when Stephen the storm was brewing, uh, I, I came, we were at our cell at Edward Lane. It was two, 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 five, and, and everybody else in the storm is brewing. And uh, soon later, soon after the electricity went off, the electricity was, I think, stopped, and there was a wind blowing. So we kept watching the wind, and I, we kept commanding, saying, Lord, we are raising up our hands for a tender praise and prayer and supplication. May our neighbors feel that we were shepherds for them in our area, shepherds for them in our area. And our area has, it's quite mountainous and slopes and whatnot, lots of trees and lots of roofs that are hardly roofs. Many roofs in our area are worse than St. Thomas's prep roof. <coughs> but as you pray, we you believe, I, I mean, we, we live in a nice area, but behind us is a Kuru Vienna, which has lots of shacks and lots of badly made roofs. Not a tree fell. Everything was fine. Because we said we are shepherds for the area. And I know many of you said that. Many of you can repeat the testimony that as I raised the tent of praise and tabernacle with my hands, nothing happened to my neighbors. How many of you can say that with me? Just put your hands to see. Nothing happened to my neighbors. Now this is the kind of Christianity we need to get into now. Because troubles are brewing all over the world. And so this little couple, this couple, who many thought were going to retire soon, but they were not going to retire hurt. They had no hurt that they had, they had no child. They didn't go to the grumble mode, God help me, God did not give us a child. I mean, don't know why we have served a God all our life, but we don't have a child. They didn't get on to that. They get on to God, not with God's destiny, day by day, raising prayer and praise, and always surprise was found in his place, serving God, never give up, because it's going to happen, say it, it's going to happen. And what happened? Now, now see what happened. According to the custom, to burn incense, 
he went into the temple of the Lord, whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. That's Old Testament. Priest goes in and he's burning incense and he's doing what he's doing. And the people, the people outside are smelling the incense is burning. Mm, today's the grass the incense is not so good. Mm, we should be burning a little more. Mm, the incense, I think it's lacking more today. Mm, I think you should have had a little more frankincense. Mm, not enough cinnamon from Sri Lanka in the incense. Give me better. Cinnamon, no, no. Serious. Cinnamon went from Sri Lanka to Solomon's temple. Didn't know that. Okay, free information. Cinnamon went from Sri Lanka to Solomon's temple. Not only to incense, into the holy anointing oil. That is the heritage of Sri Lanka. That's why we are asking all the time, Lord bless Sri Lanka. Because from time immemorial, the Solomon's Temple was 960, 970 BC, cinnamon from Sri Lanka was offered as incense in Jerusalem's temple. Ships of Solomon came, came to Gaul and to Martha, that is man. This is archival true. And they took not only cinnamon, they took cedar. Not only cedar, Solomon liked peacocks. Of course, he got proud with it. He liked ivory. Ivory men from Sri Lanka. Precious stones from men from Sri Lanka. Did you know that? So we have a special thing. But the point I want to make is this. You can't, your New Testament Christian. So your priest has gone inside. Hmm. Hmm. Today priest prayers are not enough. He's not powerful enough today. Please, your anointing is not enough. That is Old Testament. Now we are in this together. Say with me, we are in this together. You are not here to smell the incense. Priest is burning. You are here to burn your own incense. Now give a high five on that, that revelation. You have to burn your own incense. Presently you will see whose prayer God is going to answer. Did you understand that? Are you still in the mode that the priest should be praying for you? Are you? Or you know that you should be doing your own prayer, not only that, you should be offering your prayers and God wants to anoint you. Or you think priest must go, he must come anointed, powerful, and I must go and he must do it and he must have the power and I must... And I have to go under his hand. That is Old Testament mentality. Yeah. We are committed to have stars everywhere, not on the stage. Everyone is star. Daniel 12, 3. Daniel 12, 3. Those who turn some to righteousness is a star in God's firm. There's a lot of stardom on the stage. This is not New Testament Christianity. Don't go to smell someone else's incense burning. Burn your own incense. What does it mean? Let no prayers ascend to God, to heaven, on behalf of your children, on behalf of your workplace, on behalf of your work, neighborhood, on behalf of your boss, that you're praying and you, you have confidence when I raise hands and pray, when I prophesy. We have a blessing book, eight blessings. You can prophesy over your child from the mother's womb. It's written with scriptures. You are reading the scripture every morning over your children. You put your name, your name, wife's name, husband, father, mother and children. You read. That is incense. Did you understand that? You read those scriptures over. That is the incense that you need to keep up in the house. You read a psalm, love. Not as loud as your neighbor hears, but a little loud. Psalms are meant to be read a little loud. Did you understand that? Vocalize the psalm. Even when you are meditating the scripture, you must mutter the scripture. No, it's not enough to read scripture in your head. Suppose you are reading Psalm 1, you should be read, you should be voicing it out like this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the council of the Lord, who does not stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He delights in the word of the Lord and he meditates in it day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of God. His leaves shall not wither. He will bring forth fruit in new season. Like that you speak all scripture. Did you understand that? So you are the priest of your home. Don't trust. 
Don't think that you have to go under someone else's hand for your blessing. Of course, we believe in laying on of hands. Then when you lay hands, also sick shall be covered. So don't transfer the anointing to Old Testament thinking is a disgrace to the cross of Christ. Cross of Christ, oh, is the veil there or not? When Christ died on the cross, do you remember? The veil tore. Top to bottom or bottom to top? Top to bottom. Because bottom to top, any man could have done. Top to bottom. Top to bottom. So there's no, some other holy place is all open now. Every Christian is to be in this. So don't get into this Old Testament habit. We now know we are to be the priest of the home, priest of our workplace, priest of our neighborhood. Tell your neighbor, you are a star. Yeah. Every Christian is a star who turns many to righteousness. That's why we have opportunities for weakness. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Now it happened. Angel of the Lord, fear fell upon him. And what did the angel say? Do not be afraid, said Christ, for your prayer is her. Whose prayer is her? Your prayer is her. So if there is some issue that has not yet worked out, my solution is this. Let your prayer be heard. Stop running from place to place. Favor is not in a place. Favor is on your life. You can't change favor by changing the place. Are you listening? That is sacerdotalism. That is priestcraft. Favor is on your life. You change the place, favor doesn't change. What is favor? God's grace in action, in executive action, is favor. For promotion, you can write it down. God's grace. You have to bring your pen and your paper. This class is more important than the Kukuri class. I mean, surely you all went to Kukuri classes. Some cakes, the yellow goes first. Some cakes, some cakes, the white goes first. For men, it doesn't matter because their work begins after the cake is baked. Are you writing down? Grace of God. It's executive action. For our promotion is called favor. Grace of God, when we falter, its executive action is called mercy. Did you understand? So when we are on a step up, grace of God is working for us, favor upon favor. We keep improving, we keep increasing. Amen. Let's say it together. When favor is upon us, is the executive action of grace. Grace is there. Outworking of grace. That is what executive action is. Outworking of grace is favor for you to do your court case, for you to do your clinic, for you to, for a child to study. Did you understand favor? And a child who is not that good, favor comes and makes that child much better. I heard an outstanding testimony from a parent how that mother was praying and how the child did feel beyond child's ability because of fear. Mercy is when we have not done so well. This grace of God shut up. Grace of God doesn't shut up. Grace of God, executive action, when we have not done so well, when we need a pickup, it's called mercy. Did you understand how grace works for favor and how grace works pick us up? And give us a second chance. Sometimes when we flip, isn't it? Then mercy works. But when we are up and up, favor works. So here we go. You should have one fourteen. Surprise! Uh, your prize for your wife Elizabeth will bear your son, and you shall call his name John. Now Elizabeth meant oath of God. Zacharias meant God remembers. After so long, God didn't forget 
God remember. Now, if you are wondering whether God has forgotten what you asked from Him, God has forgotten. But let you start praying. Let your prayer go up to God. May you keep incense. May you raise hands. And God will remember. And He gave a son. His name was John. Now in Hebrew you don't get Jason. So the original Hebrew was Yohanan. You say that with me. Yohanan. Any Yohan here? Yohan. Yohan. What is that? So seeing the Yohan is very close to the Hebrew Yohanan. Now Yo means for Yahweh, Hanan means God gives, God grants, God grants. Did you understand the word of John? So some people will call it in the name of it is gift of God. God granted. And God granted exceedingly, abundantly, more than Sikhrais or Elizabeth could have asked for. Why the delay? I said, why the delay? God was going to give them the son, the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. That's why the delay. Jesus himself said, of all born to women, none greater than John the Baptist. So when God is delaying something, you see the God of old. You see the God who remembers. You see the Yahweh gratis. Do you understand Yohanan? Yohanan means Yahweh. You understand the word gratis, you know. So graciously, the best you could have had, He gave. That's how God gives. So in time to come, God gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So this is the forerunner, Yohanan. We'll say to Yohanan, remembering it means Yahweh, gratis, a new name for God. So much more than they could have thought. They thought they are confident of their life, and very soon Zechariah will be retiring and they fail in insignificance. No, their son became the forerunner for Jesus to come on earth. Will you have that view of God? If something has delayed, He is going to send rain. Great grace. Will you say it great grace? If something went wrong the first time, second time is going to send great grace. Will you believe it, Lord? That his second time is so much better even than the first time. Because first time it was your ability, you tried a second time when you feel. When you thought, I'm done, I'll be risen off. God, gratis. I will to remember him that when I thought, I'm done, God gave better than what it was. Will you believe in God? This is called destiny. Next step is better than I have known. Next step is better than I have known. You may be a student studying. You may be 50 years old like Zacharias. You may be 80 years old like Simeon and Anna. You remember? They were long in the temple. Nobody, Caiaphas didn't see them. Annas didn't see them. None of the priests saw them. Priests only saw the royalty coming. Priesthood was very corrupt. But God saw them. See the people whom God invited for the first Christmas, isn't it? Old Simeon and Anna. Useless for people, but God saw their remnant prayers. Savior is coming. Savior will come in our lifetime. Are you praying like that for the second coming? Are you praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. What is that come? To my patch of earth. In our lifetime, you come. In our lifetime, you come. So at present, there's a lot of tectonic, tectonic instability around the India plate. Sri Lanka is on India plate. It was, it was one of the most stable tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are very deep down. But 2004 December tsunami, the earthquake, 
made our tectonic plate very unstable. So it did a subduction, the thick India plate went under the Austria plate. So now all around the India plate, Iran and Iraq, under the, under the Himalayas, and right up to Andaman Islands, the breach has come. So now there's a lot of tectonic activity. So if there's daily tectonic activity, little, little release of pressure from magma, a massive earthquake may not happen. You can pray like that. Got me or not? If you didn't get me, ask me after the message. Can't spend any more time on tectonic plates. But the same problem is going on in the Pacific plate. So the Pacific plate has one border by Japan where the Fukushima earthquake happened. And Pacific plate has another border by Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Francisco Mexico, where earthquakes have been. So that is also unstable. So science is speculating whether the next big one would be Pacific plate or India plate. Did you understand that? Shall we say earthquake go to Pacific plate? <laughs> we can't pray like that, isn't it? But we can pray that Christians with all hands, you are God's protection camp. Angel of the Lord encamps around you. Therefore, your shepherdly prayers, your protection, people will begin to feel, and neighbors and friends who are laughing at you now will need your faith. Amen. It's a time like that. So don't become a fanstic Christian. Don't become a superstitious Christian. Okay? Become a scientific, spiritual Christian who knows what is happening, knows what God is able to do. So son was born, Yohanan. God gives the best, especially when there is a delay. God gives the best when an error happens. You remember David's first son from Bathsheba? Still born. Still born. So God said, David, you did a horrible thing. You killed the husband, got the wife, she was helpless, and that child died. But God told Bathsheba, I'll do better than for you than what the king can do. You are a woman who was much wronged by whom? By the king. Worse still, the most godly king. Isn't it? When godly people do evil things, it hurts a lot. Correct? And this was David's state. But God told Bathsheba, I'll do better for you than King David can. I'll give you a son who will be the king next to David. And he'll be world famous. Did God do that for Bathsheba? You understand your point? God gratis. When you have failed the second time, God does better than you would have done. Give me a way if you understand. I can stop my message here. I will. Short message. Want me to go on or what? I think we have understood. That's true. God gratis. Yohanan means God gratis. Let's pray a little. God did so much better for Bathsheba. Though Solomon missed it up, God did it well. Gave her a son who was the wisest, who was the richest. God did it for Bathsheba. God did it for Elizabeth and surprise. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Jesus increased in wisdom, intellect and stature, in favor with God, favor with man. So body, soul and spirit, Jesus grew. You shall have joy and gladness, that is the promise, with John Bond. Verse 40, you shall have joy and gladness, but immediately God says there's a mission. Say with me there's a mission. When we get a child, there's a mission. When we get a good job and a position, there's a mission. When we get a pay hike, there's a mission. When we get any new gift of God, gift also has a mission. So God told Zacharias, even before birth, not only will you have joy and gladness, many will rejoice 
about his birth, that involved quite a lot of sacrifices from John and from Zacharias and Elizabeth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Shall we pray that we will have prayers that our children will be great in the sight of the Lord? That our child will be sent from the Lord to his feet. Your child may be so little like Ruasha. Or your child may be 5, 10, 15, or 25, or 30, or 35. Still, parent, you can pray, saying, Let my child be great only from the presence of the Lord. Only as the Lord has given. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. Let my child not have <coughs> any other sense of greatness. No sense of temporal greatness, boastfulness, pomp, and pride. Let my child be great in the sight of the Lord, which is permanent greatness. Shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Anyone want to adapt that? Tell your neighbor what is good for John the Baptist. This is good for me. Nobody is saying that. If you want to edit this, so far you came along saying, Pastor, preaching Pastor, it's very good. The message is very good. You are going line by line. So I, I, did, I, did, I did nothing. I am not exaggerating. I am only reading scripture. What is the scripture? For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Who is saying this? None other than the angel. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Oh, Pastor, that is old fashioned. What is the meaning of this? For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. No, no, that is new fashion. This one shall bring neither wine nor strong drink. You are too extreme, Ani. Up to now it was not extreme, no, Ani. Very good exposition. Faithful to the word. This, Ani, you are spoiling the whole sermon, Ani. Stop it now, please, and get on. Okay, I heard it. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit. Which Spirit? Holy Spirit. Even from his mother's womb. I want to come to a point. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. What's it that I want to come and stop at? Okay, I want you to get to this point that every child, everything you get from the Lord, there is a mission in it also. To make others glad. Christmas is a time when we want to make others glad. Whatever the Lord gives us, He wants to do. This is what I want to do. Now, this child would do these things. What, what will he do? He will go also before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, verse 17, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So, beloved, all this is in the context of a community of free people prepared for the Lord. So we are not selfie hero. Say me, I'm not a selfie hero. I'm not going here and there doing great miracles. You are a people prepared for the Lord. It's all happening in a community. Give me a way if you understand this. You are not exercising your gifts of the Holy Spirit here and there. You are doing it as a community. You are not preaching here and there. You are doing it as a community so that you belong to a people being prepared for the Lord together. Okay? No isolation, we run clear. You are doing it together. That is one. Next one I want to bring to you is, he was going to be 30 years old. This is what I want to ask. Jesus was 30 years old. John the Baptist was 6 months older to Jesus. Yes, son. How do you? Mary visited Elizabeth soon after Mary was told. So we believe Mary was Mary immediately conceived. Just after conception, Mary visited Elizabeth in Elizabeth's sixth month. You remember that? And when Mary visited Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby was how many months old? Six months old. Twenty-four week baby recognizes the spirit of God in Mary. You understand how precious a child in the womb is. No abortion, never. Got me? Put your hand up. 24 week baby. 
recognizes the Holy Spirit. How much a child feels in the mother's womb. How careful we must be. You understand? With the things we say, things we do, child felt. The anointing on Mary's life, because Jesus was being born, the child in Elizabeth womb felt it. So, when you are passing 30, I want to make this passionate. It's a wonderful thing to give your life before the age of 30. It's a wonderful thing. Then you have the strength of your days to give to Christ. Then Christ can grow with you in your escalation time. You can grow together. You know, from 30 we are growing, isn't it? From 30 we are growing. From 30 we are growing. Now, many of you have known the Lord from 30 years. How many of you have known the Lord passing 30? And you may have known the Lord before that. Passing 30. How many of you have known the Lord passing 30? Now you have passed 30. Some of you are going across 40. Take care. 40 is the time your eye begins to open in the wrong way. This is a pastoral care I have. At going through 30, you were so strong. You only had eyes for your life. You were so vigorous to the call of God. But going across the court, don't fault. We want to go to the 50s and 60s. And Christmas is for children as well as 50 year olds. Christmas is for 30 year olds. Christmas message already is saying when 30 you are going to do this. And from 30, passing 40. Pray with me. From 30. Pray with me. From 30, passing 40. I want to be faithful. Faithful 40s. Thriving 30s. Faithful 40s. Have you heard any other adjective for 40s? Wipe it off the record. Faithful 40. So the people you have, love you had for Christ, going through 30. 40 is our test of time. Let it not test you. Let it not test you. Be strong for the Lord. Will the worship team come? Thank you, Holy Spirit. How to make ready the people prepared for the Lord. For that I want to use this scripture 2 Timothy 3.16 To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. So what is the church doing? Uh, we want to turn the hearts of the children. Disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So I believe every rebellious person, every Marxist, secular humanist. What is the one here? Every atheist. There's a wisdom of God's righteousness that can open his heart. So with your spirit and with your brain, apply the gospel. Say with the Lord Jesus, with my spirit and with my brain, help me apply the gospel. One more thing I want to clarify. What does it mean? He shall go before him in the spirit and power of the Lord. What is the spirit and power of Elijah? Why was it brought in at this time when Jesus is being born and John the Baptist is getting ready at the herald as the forerunner? Elijah was the last great time in Israel. Give me a wave if you understand that. Last great time. After Elijah, there wasn't a prophet like Elijah. Agreed? After Elijah, Israel ran down. Elijah's time, they just held so. But after Elijah, Israel ran down. How much did they run down? They ran out of Jerusalem. They lost their country. Their children and everybody else went into slavery. So the last great memory of Israel was Elijah's time. Also, there's a prophecy in Malachi 4 that Elijah will come. So what was Elijah's time like? One, there's an evil principality called Jezebel who had taken hold of government, who had taken hold of economics, who had taken hold of religion. 
got it. There was an evil influence, triumvirate evil influence on politics, religion and economics. She ruled it all. God said there is going to come a time like that, that evil principality will be ruling the world and it would need the spirit and power of Elijah to withstand it. We are living in that time. There's fake news, corrupt, perverse, pervasive entertainment. There's mockery. I want to appeal to you when governments are wrong, don't get into mockery. Christians own problems. Christians don't laugh at problems. Christians don't operate in sarcasm. Christians don't operate in mockery. Christians don't operate in comedy. Christians don't operate in tragic comedy. Christians have a role of intercession. Any problem you see, you own it. And say, Lord Jesus, through your cross and intercession, you have a solution. I am the solution. I will say, don't take the flip out of sarcasm, mockery, laughing at government. That's not the Christian's rule. Don't get offended because you are fearful. So one wrong avenue is mockery, laughing, sarcasm, making light of very serious things. That's not a Christian ministry. Agree? That's not a gift of the Spirit. That's not a fruit of the Spirit. Are you listening? Don't turn to mockery. Shut up those TV programs, circulating WhatsApps. Don't turn to mockery, it will catch up with you. Ultimately, people are laughing at God. Did you understand? Secondly, when people are fearful, they get offended. Don't go that way. Thirdly, iniquity is increasing, lust is increasing. Don't put your step on a slippery slope saying, I know when to stop. When you are sleeping, you know when you are sleeping. Are you listening? Three things. This is the age of Jezebel. Because scripture said, first coming times will be like the second coming times. That's why we are getting prepared with first advent. It will stand us in good stead for second advent. Okay, give me a way if you agree with all this. So spirit and power of Elijah will put down Jezebel this was the last time when the whole nation of Israel encountered God's power with open eyes on Mount, on Mount Carmel. Prophet was more powerful than king on Mount Carmel. Whole nation turned to God. I mean to believe this was Sri Lanka. A whole nation can be born of God. When, when Zion prevails, the nation can be born of God. Isaiah 66, 4. Whole nation can be born of God. Natural elements were commanded by Elijah on Mount Carmel and rain came. So James 5 says, man like us, heavens would be shut up at his command, heaven would be opened up at his command. You understand the power of the spirit of Elijah? You understand why we need, to, in these times, why we need ministry like that? Why we need anointing like that? Why we need to believe like that? A very weak and Jezebelic religious system that mocked the sons of God and threatened their freedom of worship was overthrown. So let's pray that we will know the times and we will be like John, a man sent from God. Shall we rise to God? God holds. God holds. And the world. Your and God rise. They have failed for a long time. They might have had equal meaning in a conservative Hebrew culture. But God grants. Their second least was better than their first. Will you say yes, Lord? that you feel that you need much, much grace, the Lord is sufficient. The Lord is sufficient. Thank you.
make the decision. Don't keep away from communion. The time of communion is for examination. And then let it pass under the blood of Jesus. Never avoid communion. Avoiding communion only will mean you hope to continue in the sin. Or you hope to continue in the bitterness. Communion time is the time when the blood speaks for us and the body breaks for us. Let's say together. In communion time, blood speaks for me. Better than I could do. Body breaks for me. Living men are within me. So I encourage all of you who know the Lord Jesus Christ fearlessly, boldly to take communion. Communion table is not to prevent but to encourage. Don't judge yourself and condemn yourself. When we judge under the blood it's for justification not for condemnation. 1 Corinthians 12 28. We are empowered to judge our sin. Bring it under the blood and rise up and say, I am free. I am clean. No more guilty. No more returning to my vomit.
When you go to office on Monday and you want to witness to someone, what will you tell him? It is 